This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Carol. Carol talks for a living from morning till night. So she relies on Flo's crystal clear home phone service brought to her through Flo's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her in the know. And because she bundles her mobile broadband and TV services, she enjoys huge savings. So she can enjoy much more for much less. So visit any Flo retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. This is the Barbados Today evening news update for Thursday, March 24th. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Emergency talks are underway this evening in a bid to prevent further industrial action following protest action by air traffic controllers at the Grantley Adams International Airport this morning. Regional airline Liat was forced to cancel several flights as a result of the industrial action and workers at the Bridgetown port also downed tools. Their action was in solidarity with colleagues at the Barbados Water Authority who have been on strike for nearly a week demanding payment of over $30 million in outstanding increments. Among those affected by this morning's strike at the Grantley Adams International Airport were the members of the Barbados Carifta team who are heading out to Grenada. Today is just a temporary setback. We um, will get the kids as prepared and, and handle the situation as best as we can, but I don't expect that this will significantly affect any performances. Okay. Um, what's, what's the mood, Monica? Are you disappointed? How are they feeling about the Well, I really can't comment on the present situation as to how they feel, the mood or whatever, mm -hmm. but this, this um, like I said, this is just a little setback. We won't be derailed by this at all. Okay. What time are you all scheduled to, to arrive? We are scheduled to arrive at like 2 something. And the competition actually starts? The competition starts on Saturday. On Saturday. So this in no way will impact the preparations? So, uh, maybe we no, we want to go to the track tomorrow. So Because we heard that the airport is no shelter six. So how and much do you think that will at, So we don't know. And earlier today, the General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union, Tony Moore, addressed workers assembled at the entrance of the Bridgetown port. She accused the BWA of being insensitive towards the workers' concerns. The message that they will want, therefore, to send to workers is that we can do without you. And that is the clear message at the <coughs> Barbados Water Authority. Workers have been on in industrial action since last week, Wednesday. Wednesday was the 16th of March. And over the weekend, but even before the weekend, from on the Friday, the 18th of March, the port, the water authority, sorry, was engaging scab labor. But not just any scab labor, scab labor some from other government departments. And the same water authority that doesn't have money, money to give workers what is owed to them, is the same water authority that was engaging private labor. And as we mentioned earlier, workers at the Bridgetown port also took industrial action and close to 10,000 tourists and scores of local merchants were among those adversely affected by the shutdown at the port. The chief executive officer of, Bar of the Bridgetown Port, Inc., David Jean-Marie, told Barbados today he is particularly worried that the eight cruise ships scheduled to arrive here over the Easter weekend would not be serviced if the industrial action continued beyond today, and he is appealing to the disputing parties to settle the matter urgently. The CEO said every effort would be made to accommodate the cruise vessels, including a major home porting German ship carrying some 3,000 passengers. But he says being able to supply them with stock is still a serious challenge. It is a major concern to us because we have, for example, we have four cargo vessels that we would have wanted to discharge and load um, over the course of today and prior to Good Friday because we don't normally work cargo vessels on the Good Friday, for which reasons was one of those closed days. Mm -hmm. um, some of the ships, the one ships to work, for example, today has six containers for a cruise ship tomorrow. So if this is not resolved, we will have a problem in that. We need to, we need to, um, to provide, provide for the cruise ship, my chief, three. And six of the containers are still on board one cargo vessel 
they're not, they're not being worked. So that's an example of an issue that we would have, clearly. And obviously the, the, the gates are not open for people to come and collect barrels or commercial cargo. That will impact on merchants and commerce generally. So it's a concern. Meanwhile, private sector organizations are also calling for the dispute to be settled given the possible impact on the community and the economy. And opposition leader Mia Motley blasted the Frendel Stewart administration today, saying the industrial action was another example of what she calls the government's callous attitude to and contempt for ordinary workers. The government believes that they can put the workers' concerns on a leeway plan to be dealt with either when government gets around to it or when the workers are forced to bring the country to its knees to get the government's attention. This is not how Barbadians can go forward with confidence. The Barbados Water Authority must engage its workers with respect as their claim is legitimate, even if daunting. I trust, however, that the Barbados Workers' Union will not be unreasonable in their immediate demands. But we will never know that if the parties are not talking. In sports, West Indies captain Darren Sammy says he's confident his team can beat South Africa on Friday to secure a spot in the ICC World T20 tournament. The two teams meet tomorrow at the Vidarbha Cricket Association Stadium in the night contest. The match pulls off at 10 a.m. Eastern Caribbean time. West Indies lead the group with two wins from two matches. Sammy spoke to the media after today's training session. We just want to win cricket matches, you know, and... So far, the pitches we've played on, uh, the grounds, the stats is the team that that um, chases. You know, they they have a higher percentage uh, win ratio there. Um, you know, we look at the the, the the pitch conditions there. We saw we saw uh, the match against uh, New Zealand and and, and, uh, and India. You know how we turned and, and stuff like that. So we'll take that into consideration, but. Uh, you know, fortunately, I've won two toss, you know, and uh, I don't know, it's not something that's guaranteed, but uh, yeah, whatever we ask to do first, you know, we just have to do it well. There's regional and international news after this short break. In news from the region, the Premier of Nevis, Vance Amory, is endorsing the passage of the National Assembly Elections Amendment Bill, which repeals the provision for security personnel and persons who perform essential services to vote before Election Day. Early voting was done in last year's elections for the first time, but Amory says that it served no useful purpose. And finally, the former Bosnian Serb leader Radovan Karadic has been convicted of genocide and war crimes during the 1992 to 1995 war and sentenced to 40 years in jail. United Nations judges in The Hague found him guilty of 10 of 11 charges. They included genocide over the 1995 Srebrenica massacre. We get more in this BBC report. It is the most symbolically charged international war crimes verdict in Europe since the Nuremberg trials after the Second World War. Radovan Karadzic had presented himself throughout his trial as a man constantly striving for peace. But the evidence was overwhelming. In Sarajevo, the judge said, his forces, called the SRK, deliberately sniped at and bombarded civilians. They fired at children playing or cycling in the street. Thousands died. Karadzic knew about it and bore individual criminal responsibility for it. Mr. Karadzic, could you please stand? 21 years after he was first indicted, Radovan Karadzic finally rose to face justice for, for what the judge called the most the egregious theory. of crimes. Guilty of the following counts. Count two, genocide. 
Count three, persecution, a crime against humanity. Count four, extermination, a crime against humanity. Count five, murder, a crime against A quarter humanity. century ago, he seemed beyond Count accountability, six, acting murder, with absolute impunity. Tonight, he knows he's likely to spend the rest of his life Count in seven. prison. And that's the evening news. Remember, there's more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. And if you haven't done so as yet, you can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also tune in to Channel 99 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM for more news and sports. I am Marika Williams. Do have a pleasant weekend.